everybody. What's up? What's up? Kids are back again. Absolutely. This time we're going to talk about our NBA awards. We're going we're gonna to get it started real quick. Rookie of the year. Very debated award this year. Do you give it to Trey Young? Give it to Luca? Do you have a third person involved? Let's get into what our picks are. All right, we'll dive straight into it. I'm doing well. John Hunter doing well, too. But, uh, you know, Rookie of the Year, I think it's pretty simple here. I'm going to be taking Trey Young. I think it's even more simple. I'm going to take Luka Doncic. Okay, well, clearly, we disagree. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, John. Because well, call me crazy. <laughs> but you and, like, 80% of other sports analysts agree that Luka Doncic is the Rookie of the Year, and I can see your case for it. You look at the stats. I'll, you know, I'll leave you. The man has averaged... You almost say, oh, Trey Young, he's been doing amazing since All Star break. The award is not called Rookie of Since the All Star break. God damn it. Alright, sorry guys. Had a little, had a little spill. I spilled the water. There's a little residue from my shot break yesterday. Got a little wet. Uh, rookie of the Year, anyway. Trey Young, right here. Luca. Saucin. So, I'm gonna just take it, take it here. Trey Young, let's. Take the stats, put them against each other for a second. At a brief look, you can see that Luca averages barely more points with 21 a game versus Trey Young's 19. Uh, Luca has the edge in rebounds by about three, and then uh, Trey Young has a lead in assists. He's got eight assists, Luca's got around five, six, and Trey Young leads that for rookies, and Luca leads scoring for um, rookies as well. So we take. Trey Young averaging a little less, more uh, points, more assists. They shoot the ball almost identical. You take into account Trey Young started shooting this year completely abysmal. I mean, everyone was saying that at the beginning of the year, after the draft, whenever Luka got traded, because you know, obviously the Hawks draft Luka, they end up trading for Trey Young and they get a pick out of it. Everyone was saying, oh my God, this was a huge trade rave. I cannot believe the Hawks had a chance at Luka and lost him because Luka came off the scene firing probably because I don't know the kid already played for like three years but so he was a little ready you take a kid like Trey Young who's only 19 years old coming in played one year at Oklahoma started shooting 45 foot 40 foot three it's like absolutely insane shit we've never seen in college led the led the NCAA in points and assists coming into the draft he had a lot of expectations a little small a little stature but was able to seriously heat up at the end of the season now you take Trey Young Versus Luka, 43 first, 42 percent field goal percentage, 33 first, 32 percent three point percentage. They practically have identical pursuit, uh, shooting numbers. But you look after the All Star break, Trey Young's been averaging over 26 a game. Absolutely absurd. His assists are up too, and so when you take that into account, going forward, it's almost like Trey Young's been the better shooter, better scorer. I mean, you got to give a, a 19 year old kid a break coming into the league, right? Give him a little just chance to kept at least 10 games. Too. Too. So. Okay, but I mean, he played against the Celtics in a preseason game when he was 15. Like, he played in the TD Garden. Like, so. Okay, but do you want to, like, you want to say Trey Young's never played against an NBA player? Like, goes to a camp. I'm just Orlando saying that, like that I think no one really knew who Luka was, and everyone knew who Trey Young was. Everyone had the spot. Like, Trey Young had a more pressure coming into him, and I don't think mentally he was ready for that as much as someone like Luka was, who had already okay. been a EuroLeague MVP. I was so, like, I don't think there's a I, it shouldn't penalize Luca, in, but, in the award, but, I mean. but then again, it shouldn't penalize Trey Young because your only argument, everyone's only argument, like I said, I think Luca probably is going to end up getting, you know, Trey's going to get snubbed, Luca will win the MVP. But the only argument they're going to have is you've got to take into account the start of the season. You can't forget about the start of the season where Luca came off the scene firing Trey Young. Like I said, shooting was abysmal, terrible shooting, like 20% from three. It was, at, it was really, really, really sad for me to see as a huge Trey Young fan. But able to turn around now, looking like a huge playmaker. Absolutely. Everyone's Absolutely. saying like, you know, if you like before the trade was terrible at the beginning of the year for uh, the Hawks, but now it's kind of like you'd be happy with either player you got. Here's the thing: if Trey was averaging around 30, I'd be like, never mind, got it. Well, he's averaging 26 since the All Star break. I know, I know. But here's the thing: Luka was averaging 20 before the All Star break, and like 22 after. And 22 after. So. They're both good picks. It's They're both great wrong. picks. It's hard to go wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but I, just, I just think, like I said last time when we tried to record this and file error happened, what Trey Young is doing right now is great for him going into next year. Really good. Great. Like, the fact that he doesn't win it should not... All-star caliber next year. If he's averaging 25 and 8, I mean... Absolutely. He has he has an all-star. I don't think he'll average 25. I think he'll average more around 22 and 8. I'm, I'm 
the hope of next year, which is still all That's numbers. doable, and that's that'd be that'd great. Be better than, way better than Kyle Lowry, I mean, this year. Absolutely. So, that's, like, you take into account Trey Young, the Hawks looking up. So, I do great, think Luka yeah. will probably win it in the end, probably get snubbed, just like, you know, whatever. But um, I'm taking Trey Young as my rookie of the year. Ready to move on? Let's do it. Okay, we got. Next, we're going to move on to uh, defensive, player. defensive Player of the Year, and we got we got a couple candidates. We've got Rudy Gobert, you've got Joel Embiid, you've got PG, you've got. Um, let me look at that. Uh, you got PG, Rudy Gobert, um, Joel Embiid, Miles Turner. Miles Turner is a good one. The, uh, Miles Turner is the big. Uh, he, I think he'll probably finish third behind either. If you take PG or Gobert, however, oh, you want to. Um, Line it up here. Who do you got, John? Is your first? I've got PG. You got PG? I've got PG. We both got PG. We agree. Paul George leading the league in um, deflections. Deflections and steals. Pretty much up there with 2.2. The steals uh, category were very close. You got Harden also there. For us. Just a little quick shout out. But you got PG up there in having to pick up the hardest man every time down. Yeah. And you saw how good the Thunder were for a portion of the season. And it was until, all until, on the back of the yeah, defense. Until Paul George got injured, he was legitimately a, a, a top MVP candidate. There were times people were putting him yeah. over Harden towards the middle of the year. Yeah. yeah, and when he and he was shooting the ball crazy. I mean, he's second in scoring behind James Harden, but we're talking about for key defensive stats. He's really up there in defensive one share and efficiency. You know, Giannis is also a defensive player of the year candidate, true, yeah, too. Giannis, too Giannis. But I do think that... You know, because Giannis has the highest defensive win share in the league, but I do think that stat is kind of skewed whenever your team is as good as they are in playing defense officially and winning games by as much as they are and the Bucks have won this season. So taking into account Paul George, able to really gather, build OKC around this hustle, dominant defense. Like I said, already leading the league in steals and deflections. Really good picking up the, the highest defensive matchup, I think, Paul George. I mean, this is the perimeter league, and the fact that he picks up your best perimeter player every single time down. I would go Gobert as my second choice, only because I think too. he angers at their whole defense. But I think Paul George does the same thing from the perimeter. Yeah, I take Gobert as second choice. I think Gobert might win it after uh, getting snubbed in the All Star break. Here, we all remember how he's kind of cried on TV because he wasn't also going to get that two million dollar bonus. But the point is, we don't shed tears here. Um, Either picks are probably pretty good here, but I'm taking PG. We're both taking PG here. So, so next we move on to Coach of the Year, and you've got a lot of candidates in this. You got Nate McMillan of the Pacers after Depot's injury, still keeping him afloat, really afloat. Um, you got Doc Rivers of the Clippers again, exceeding expectations both in the beginning of the season and once Tobias Harris was traded. You've also got Coach Bud of the Milwaukee Bucks, obviously completely unlocking that team's potential and bringing them to 60 wins this season. Um, We've also got Mike Malone taking Nuggets from uh, out of the playoffs to the second seed in the West. I that's top four. Oh, and Nick Nurse is kind of in there too, just with the Raptors, but, you know, mostly those four. So you got? I've got Coach Bud. We both do. And here's the thing. When we tried to record this the other day, I said it was going to be Doc Rivers. You guys are going to be able to hear Rourke's amazing take, but it actually made me rethink it a lot. Yeah, so you take, you take my boot and holds her. Front, the coach of the Bucks. Obviously, this is his first year coaching the Bucks. You look at the Bucks, the Milwaukee Bucks as a team. Last year, finishing as the sixth seed and getting bounced in the first round of the playoffs. A little disappointing, but it looked like they were just not quite there yet. They weren't gelling. The players, Giannis was playing up to their full potential. They looked a little weak, but they still had almost pretty much all the same pieces they have this year. Of course, they've added Miritich and Brooke Lopez of sorts this year, but last year they were still very, very talented. They have like, I remember they had like the longest wingspan ever in the NBA for a oh, team. Yeah. And they now be able to see from the sixth seed last year to the first seed, not only the first seed, the best team in the NBA, and it's not even close in terms of record with the Bucks in the East, especially. You got Mike Budenholzer. I think you can mainly attribute to him and his coaching system because you look at the Bucks, who were not only, like I said already in our previous video, fourth in offensive rating, but also second in overall defense too. So a team like the Bucks, very, very, very well knit, strong unit, a lot of depth. You take a guy like Coach Bud, able to actually put that and get some real results and performance out of that, especially compare that to last year when they were the sixth seed. It's easy to see that Coach Bud has been able to elevate that team, put Giannis in his own way to really maximize his efficiency, averaging over 45% from his field goal percentage, and allowing the Bucks to really gel and see if it looks like Eric Bledsoe is playing well. Chris Middleton was an all-star this year, so 
but it would really able to ele elevate the game. And I don't want to take anything away from someone like Mike Malone, who I would have as my second pick. I thought you said Doc Rivers able to pretty much loses all his players, and now still able to keep the team in the playoffs. Or yeah. the tank. And, but Mike Malone able to take the Nuggets from just missing the playoffs last year to really, really, really. Yeah, up, that's fair. That's fair. Up to the second, they, were, they could have been the first seed for a while in the season, and they they're being slept on. It's almost like because their players are. A little, I don't want to say underrated, but they're not developed yeah. and experienced in, in the playoffs. Like we are, I'm taking San Antonio to upset them, yeah. and so Mike Malone, I still think deserves that credit for elevating the Nuggets in the Western Conference. I mean, I it's a hard, Nuggets. hard conference, but overall, Coach Bud, what he did for the Bucks, turning the Bucks around in the way he did, no other coach I think has had that same impact. And I don't think that if you have a Jason Kidd, I don't, and you still get those players, Miritich and Brook Lopez, I don't think the team does as well as, as it has been. Even under a different coach, I think Coach Bud really does make that team play the way it's. I mean, his style is the same thing with it when he was in Atlanta, and they won the first seed in the East. That was uh, 2015, I think. It was all him. Like everyone was saying, hey, this guy has put the schemes together to really help that team unlock what it needs to be. So, you know, absolutely, Coach Bud, Coach Beer for that. Now let's move on to the most improved player, and this is a this is all over the place. So you got Montrezl Harrell of the Clippers. You've got D'Lo of the Nets. You've got Pascal Siakam of the Raptors. You've got um, Derrick Rose's name is being brought up after being in the league multiple years, but I'm in a comeback season right now. Um, Rook, who do you have for the most important player? Um, let's pull up. I got my boy Pascal Siakam. I think this one's going to be very close. It's easy to see how you can take D'Angelo Russell yeah. um, for a most improved player. And I'm not going to argue anything about D'Angelo Russell. I also think there is probably a case to think that he's more deserving than Siakam based off his impact and you know he was he carries his team. And, yeah he was an all-star this year and but for me personally I think someone like uh someone like Siakam is very slept on you take it Siakam he's averaging 17 and 7 with um uh, three assists a game too so you, uh, Siakam and he was averaging like seven last year yeah, averaging seven last year, take a huge jump to become a real key, key contributor for that Raptors team. Slept on a lot when you look at that offense in that organization. For the Raptors, you think, okay, you obviously got Kawhi, they're going to be running stuff through. And obviously Kyle Lowry, you got Van Fleet coming off the bench, you got Danny Green there to make a real big impact. But Siakam, like we said, he hit a clutch three to end the uh, regular season last night. Probably the Raptors were playing, but the point is... Going forward, and he, he, he improved Siakam. defensively. He improved three-point shooting. He improved scoring, rebounding, assisting, everything. He improved everything that you could ask him to do. And he, he, we look at these tall, lanky guys, and we're like, oh, he can handle the ball a little bit. He can shoot a little bit. He can, you know, he's athletic a little bit. And we say, oh, if they can grow, if they can, you know, progress with all those things, yeah. they have a lot of potential. Pascal has really capitalized on the potential. From last year, this year, I think no one probably expected him to go this quickly. I think we yeah. said he could be where he is right now, but in like another maybe next season or another season after that. You would think the growth would be more gradual, but it was very exciting. And, 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 and his impact on He's the, the team, second best player on that team. Yeah, yeah. His impact on the Raptors is very evident because you take Kawhi, obviously the star of the um, star of that team, but when Kawhi's been out a lot of games this year, he's been out uh, 20, 22 games this year. You know the Raptors record is in those 22 games, 17 and 5. That's actually a higher percentage than with Kawhi in the game. So no. I don't want to say the Raptors have a better record, better they're a better team without Kawhi. But the point is, look at the record in that stat. It shows you how much who they're leaning on. Pascal Siakam, his stats are so inflated whenever Kawhi's not playing, and his impact is. You know, I don't want to say, like you said, he's the second best player on the team, Multiple. but he, yeah, he has the biggest impact for the Raptors. Kyle Lowry, of course, is going to be Kyle Lowry distributing the ball, making sure everyone's involved. Sure. But they're really lean on Siakam, not only defensively, but also offensively to get some big buckets for him. Siakam, my uh, most improved player. But like I said, if it's Andrew Russell, I'm not going to be upset what he's done for the um, for the Nets. Averaging over 20 a game now, and his field percentage has really, really improved from last year. He's gone um, from a great, from a good player to like a leader. I think that's the biggest difference now. Is he, he's a leader on the court and off the court and has carried them to the playoffs. You know, and I, I think that's a great thing for, for his case. But he's definitely second. Uh, I just think Piat Pascal being the second best player on one on the second best team in the East carries a little more weight. And I think just the jump he took was a big thing. I know Delo's Delo's jump in stats wasn't as big uh, as Pascal's and so I think that, that also hurts him a little bit. But I think when you argue Delo, you argue 
non-stats. You 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 argue, hey, clutch shots. What do you mean it could be a stat? But like the way he carries the team late in game if it's a close game, the way he he leads the team, those are things that he's improved on. His his whole swagger about him has gotten a lot better. Got you. But yeah. Anyway, moving on to sixth man of the year. Uh, let's see, you got Montrose Harrell, you got Lou Williams, you got Lou Williams, you got Lou Williams. <laughs> Did I mention Lou Williams? <laughs> Not Montrose Harrell, too, dude. Bro. Oh, and Montrose Harrell. Sorry. Come on. I forgot about him. <laughs> who, who do you have winning? Who is the best Clippers bench player? Yeah, exactly. uh, <laughs> Who's the best Clippers? Who do you have winning? I got Montrez. I've got Lou. I think it's toss up. You look at the both players, obviously, Lou Will, they could name the award after him, honestly. They probably will. He's. Once he retires. He is. Like the Lou Will slash Mark Crawford award. He's the best player on the Clippers. You might say Danilo Gallinari, but I, I think it's undeniable when Lou Will is in the game that he's taking over and making the biggest impact for the Clippers, averaging over 22 a game. But personally, I'm taking Montrez because he comes in the game really, really quickly for the Clippers, usually every game, and he plays tons of minutes. Montrez Harrell, former Rocket, obviously they were both on the Rockets in that trade for uh, Chris Paul, but I was really upset when we didn't keep Harrell and keep developing because he could kind of have that free role we're seeing right now in the Rockets. But Absolutely. Montrez Harrell, and he's probably better than free. We bring up Siakam. Montrez Harrell is averaging 17 and 8 still a game, pretty much the same stats as Siakam. And mm -hmm. Siakam gets a lot of hype for being this most proof player on the Raptors. But you take a guy like Montrez Harrell, and it's really, really he's turned himself into oh an, a God. really good NBA oh player. Right? I mean, a second round Plus pick. So much too, exactly. Yeah. And like because he's a little short as a center, you, you think it really hurts. Him, but he really, really makes his presence felt. Yeah, he especially jumps so high. Oh, like, so he athletic. dunks everything. Yeah, yeah. So I'm taking Montrez, averaging probably really similar stats to Pascal, shooting a little higher percentage than Lou, but Lou Will is obviously taking yeah, more outs. Yeah, all my argument is, is I think the best player on yeah, the team. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Lou can easily win it too, but I think some voters might see, okay, Lou's already got like three of them, so, you know. Uh, so if he doesn't win, that. he always finishes second. I will so. say this. I will say this. I think that when Montrezl Harrell comes off the bench and comes in games, he has a bigger impact than when Lou Williams comes in games off the bench. Like so, when the when the first round starts tonight with the Clippers and the Warriors, yeah, you're like, gonna see spark plugs. Yeah, you're gonna see Montrezl you're gonna see them really focusing on Lou Will. Uh, the Warriors will be focusing a little. Clay Thompson will be really trying to lock up. Um, Lou, but Montrez making that impact, making uh, Boogie work to Marcus Cousins, show, you know, can he stick with Montrez, not only on the block, but in those pick and roll scenarios that Lou and him are going to be running consistently in this first round. I've taken Montrez, but both options, like I said, can't go wrong with them. Absolutely. All right, well, we got one award left. What's Ladies and gentlemen. Did we do most of the other awards? I think we're missing most valuable player. MVP? MVP! And I think as Rockets fans, I think this is going to surprise a lot of people. Yeah. And it's, it, pains, is just... it pains me to say, but James Harden is the MVP before. Giannis is a runner-up. We're going to let you take it away. Tell, tell him why. All right. And tell him why Giannis is the runner-up. And our first take of the video out of Rockets for Harden jersey right here. I was ready to just put it on, switch it up. But so just imagine Roar, Roar, not Eric Gordon, the same party right here. Harden. MVP, it's very, 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 very clear to me that Harden has made the biggest impact and is the most valuable player in the NBA this year. It's not even close. He won the MVP last year and he's having a better season this year. Better Aver season. Averaging 36 over 36 a game. 36 points a game. Eight assists. You want to compare that to Giannis? He's averaging eight assists. just under 28 a game and like 12 rebounds. Of course, Giannis is going to have the edge in rebounds. Now, I don't want to get this wrong. The dude plays power forward. But yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. I want to preface right now. Giannis is obviously, obviously extremely talented. Does really well. Has made the Bucks the best NBA record team in the NBA. But you got to look at the actual impact and not get so, so, so hyped about just the record. Just because you've got to look at the team and look at how much that player is actually impacting the performance of that team. And like we've already said, I think Coach Bud really made that team a difference maker. I mean, you take Giannis last year versus Giannis this year, they got the same team. I mean, what's real different? Um, so, I mean, Harden didn't win it his first year with D'Antoni because a big argument was, oh, it's just, this is the system. Giannis is even worse than that. Harden has been snubbed. Not once, not once. Because we, remember Vance Curry, years ago, 
he had the best. But Howard played 41 games, and he still carried them to the second seed in the West. Not twice. Russell Westbrook yeah, Westbrook, Westbrook triple double. Oh, when on Harden, a losing Harden, team. Harden this time actually had the better record. See, Curry won because they had the better team, better record. And had the better this stats. Time, this time, Rockets. Yeah, first team. Two rebounds. Yeah. Not that big of a deal. People. Two rebounds, but more two more assists. So he's accounting for the most points. He had broken the most points ever account for averaging in the NBA. That was part of being able to distribute the ball, averaging. I mean, right passing the ball, scoring the ball. Man, it's an offense. Line. Still got snubbed though because of the triple double king, who now we've seen he's done it three years now. It's a great thing. Great thing. Very impressive he's done it. Applaud, applaud. That's Russell, that's Russell's Russell's thing. It's Russell's thing. It's Back like Curry and shooting threes. It's just their thing. Back to Harden though. <clears throat> I'm like, I'm just gonna ask a couple just a few things. There's been uh three sixty point games in the NBA this year. Mm -hmm. Does Harden have any of them? Oh, Giannis, Giannis, how many does Giannis have? No, no, Harden has two of them. So Kemba Walker has one. Congrats, Kemba, getting up there. Harden, only, only real, real elite player. While Kemba Walker is an all-star, you see Harden, the only MVP caliber player with two 60-point games and plenty of 58s. Like, yeah, like two or three 58, 59, 57 games. And so, you want, if you want to take how many 50-point games there were in the NBA this year, 21 of them. How many did Harden have? A lot. Nine. What? Almost half of them. Half. What? You take all the other NBA players versus their 50-point games versus Harden. He almost has half. He has nine of the 21 50-point games this year in the NBA. Um, so no way. Harden, absolutely dominant. And then he's obviously the first player uh, to score 30 points against every single team in the NBA. Did Michael Jordan do that? No. Did no. Kobe Bryant do that? No, not even Will or Did Kareem. LeBron do that? Not even Will or Kareem did that. Think about that for a second. Not even team app. Half the teams you're only playing twice, so you're gonna have to score 30 against all the teams in the East. You know, if you don't do it one time, you're gonna have to play it the next time you play them. And to be able to do that against every single team, no other player has been able to do that. 30 points a game, absolutely absurd. His usage rate is obviously high, but you gotta look at over the course of the season who do they have. You take out Capella, you take out Chris Paul. It's looking like the Rockets. You season also should is have penalized the guy for being as the, great as he is, and it just making sense. Yeah. Just, just because he uses the ball more than than Giannis and other players should not be a attack on his game and on his performance because you have to look at the he Rockets. He has someone else to take it from. You him. have to look at the Rockets. They were struggling. No one else could score. Everyone's shooting. Giannis had it. We're though. so he had no we're so low. Now it, it's easy to see now that Harden is shooting the ball more with everyone healthy. It's easy to see his stats are going down a little bit, but his efficiency is increasing because other people are making these shots. Other people are making these games good. That's why they're starting to blow teams out. But you take those guys out towards the beginning of the season. No Capella. No Chris Paul. What does Harden do? Lead the Rockets to the best team in the NBA over a 10-game span. That's when he starts his 30-point streak. Does 32 straight games of 30-plus points. Think about that for a second. That's the second longest streak ever in the NBA behind Will. That's more than MJ. More than Kobe. Never even averaged 36 a game. Harden's averaging that this year. Kobe, think about it. Kobe never even averaged as much as Harden's averaging this year. And people are talking like Giannis is the clear-cut runner for the MVP because the Bucks have the better team. But exactly it. They have a better team. But MVP I'm, is not a team of war, people. I'm I'm really upset because you know Harden. It's be the third time he gets no. Yeah. Seriously. And and so What do you want the man to do? He he has he, a historically amazing season. Like he like Russell He's Westbrook the first player lost. to ever average 36, 6, and 6. First player to ever average that for a season. Now if you take that per 100 possessions, he's averaging 40 and 10 assists. 40 and 10 and over 10 rounds, that'd be a 40 point triple double. But point is to be able to average did you see the man is having a 40 point triple double? No, well, well, his his rebounds would be just below that in an, an, a, per 100 possessions. So essentially but, a 40 point but, triple double if you give the man 100 possessions. Yes, for over four, 40 and 10. It's actually absurd the impact he makes for the Rockets. And if you watch Rockets, you know he just makes them so much better. He's he is called most valuable player he, for a reason. John, John's about to hit you with some crazy shit, but I just want to say that Harden, he's, you take his count, he's the only player to ever score over 20, uh, 2,800 points, 2,800 points, 500 assists, and 500 rebounds. He's the only player to actually average 35 points a game, over 35 points a game, and over 7 assists a game. He's God has those 950 point games. He had 57 games of over 3 points this year. 
So he's like we said, he had 32 straight, but he had almost 60. And there are plenty of games towards the end of the season where he had 28 and didn't even play the fourth quarter. You hear that? He, he averaged almost 30 through three quarters. That's no that's way. Insane. So, well, you, wait, wasn't that a stat that like he would be second behind himself? in scoring if he just played three quarters? Yeah, yeah, he, in three quarters, he averaged more than the rest of the NBA. And his shot attempts were not even that much more, like I said, that usage rate is a little higher than um, has been in previous years past, but you gotta take into account the performance of what the impact he has to do for that team. Um, so, like, and also, here's the thing. We, we think about, oh, if you look at the head-to-head matchup in terms of PER, player efficiency rating, Harden's like 0.3 below Giannis. And, and he does. And Giannis does usage, it. And Giannis his usage does rate is through the roof. His usage rate is through the roof, so you'd think your efficiency would dip. Let's take into account, okay, when is, when is a player ever had a dude have this much impact, have this much usage rate in a game? We take these kind of star players like Kobe, like MJ. Like, well, whenever they score like that, how, how does he compare against his players when he has that kind of impact? Is his usage rate, is he less efficient than these all-time, all-star caliber no. players in season? Or, like, how does he rank John? I, he ranks I, so good. Here's the thing. Among 15 seasons in the NBA where a player has scored 2,700 points or more, Harden ranks out of 15 players who have done this in NBA history. So the top 15 players to ever put up that kind of those kind of points in, 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 um, in a season. Harden was... ranks first in points per possession. He ranks first in true shooting percentage. Mostly because he will shoot threes. It helps that true shooting percentage go up. But still, number one. Number two in assists. Number three in effective field goal percentage. This is ahead of people like MJ, Kobe, Will, Kareem. Everyone. You honestly didn't make the list because you got to score those points so that you can get them in the first place. Absolutely. Anyway... So, out of all the players that score like crazy, he's one of the most efficient and does the most per possession. And then, he ranks 15th last place in field goals attempted. That's the most critical thing you gotta say. Say that so, real quick. I'm, I'm gonna say it again for him. He ranks last place in shots taken. He's not chucking them up like Kobe or MJ. He's not... Shooting, he's not every single possession Kareem or Wilt. No, he's doing it on less shots per game and putting up historically amazing scoring numbers. Then, I'll hit you with one more. That was the jab, here's the hook. 15th place in minutes played. That's it. The man is an offense unto himself. He's last in the minutes played last in the field goals attempted, except he still finishes first in the points, in the effective field goal percentage, in the true shooting percentage, in his overall impact, second in the assist column. So it's actually absurd. This is Harden, not ranking up against the NBA, ranking up against the 15 seasons in NBA history where someone's put up the kind of numbers and points that Harden's done. How does he rank up against those best players? As we see... These are the people who are, it's like, I had their poster in my room when I was a kid. It's those kind of players. He's destroyed them. It, I mean, the it, more I talk about it, the more I'm like, is it, anyone, it, it, is everyone stupid? I'll tell you why. It, it's going to be really, really sad because they're going to look at that team impact and say, you got to take into account the whole season when Harden had a slow start. He only averaged about 30 in those first 20 games. But this is 30? Like, the, he's not, here's the thing, the team was not winning, but he was still putting up numbers. And so you take it to that team, that team impact. And I'm really upset of how the Rockets finished the season because if we had won that last game against OKC, Rockets would add second seed. Yeah, tied up, clinch the second seed, only behind the Warriors, and then this MVP narrative would be a lot closer for the so, Warriors when it's like, okay, the Rockets were still with all this adversity, finished the second best team in the went, West, went behind the Warriors, obviously. To second. So, I mean, we're still one game behind that with the four seeds, but the being four seed versus second seed makes us look a lot different, even though you look at it and it's only one game difference. It still made a huge impact if Harden would have been able to be clutch and hit that his 13th in a row free throw because he was 12 for 12. Dude, I'd rather miss a free throw, but hit the three. Yeah, if he had hit that three, that would have been even better for his MVP case. Absolutely. So, unfortunately, it was a little short. It's still a good shot. He's saving it for uh, this first round against Utah. So, Harden Absolutely. looks clear cut to us, obviously, as Houston fans. But when you take a can- take that can- impact of the most it's valuable historical. player, it's and if you could historical. just get past the team success of the Bucks having the best team in the NBA record. Okay, Giannis is really, really high in defensive win shares, but yes. don't forget 
Harden finished second in deflections. He was first for a little bit too. He's only behind Paul George, who's gonna be the defense player he's of the year. Steal. So yeah, yeah, he's tied. He's tied for yeah, third, fourth steals. But it's like 2.2 versus two, so it's pretty much right there in steals. So top five in both. Part of the defensive stats. In terms of like steals and blocks, he's oh, one of the no, best, highest rated steals. post defenders too. Yes. So he, it's not like he's, it's not like he's not bad. That, he's not like yeah, the best defender. The, the haters are gonna look at everything we just said and said, okay, talk about the defense now. Whenever Giannis have the defensive win shares. Oh, we'll talk to me when Giannis just, just offense stresses. Yeah, when he, gets, when he gets the steals feet. and he gets to work those deflections. That those deflections take hustle, take work. You look at someone like Paul George who leads it, and then you're gonna say someone like Harden is a good help defender without being a good on ball. So to be able to put in that kind of work on the defensive. Work, and, and then do what he's doing on the offensive end with his usage rate. It's like, it's absurd. And his minutes play, he's, he, it's it's skyrocketing. His effective field percentage, his true shooting percentage, to be able to have that impact doing on the offensive end, and now the defensive end of the floor making that kind of impact. I it, I don't see I don't see how Giannis can be the MVP unless you're just you're going to make that team player aspect. Also, the difference in discrepancy between points in Harden at first and second, Paul George is 28, Harden's 36.1. That 8.1 difference is the biggest difference in a scoring span between the first and the second player that leads scoring ever since 1960, which was like with Will or something. 1960, ever. before games were even really televised. You take into account the fact that Harden has had this big discrepancy in scoring and still has, you know, he's averaging eight assists still. I mean, he's what? averaging eight assists. Like, he's still top 10 in assists, top still. five, top two in deflection, top five in steals. I mean, he's unbelievable. He's, unbelievable. he's, he's, he's the MVP. So, stop, stop hating. With that said, probably will still get snuck. Yeah. And, and, and he won the players' vote. He won 44% of the players' votes. So, the NBA players, 125 random players get pulled. He won 44% of that. Giannis only won 36. Somehow, Joel and received a couple of votes. Yeah. I don't know. But the point is, they probably have a couple of sixes Yeah, he's a couple of sixes to be on those teams. That makes sense. So, Harden, I don't, I don't know, guys. I'm going to be real so, upset if you're upset. But we we'll know see. what's going to happen. But. My, but at the end of the day, whether it's an MVP or an MVP runner up, the biggest thing Harden can do is show out in the playoffs Absolutely. as first legacy. His legacy is not going to be really determined on if he has a second MVP or if he's another runner up. It's going to be if he can be clutch and perform the way he's performing like this now in the playoffs. That's going to be the biggest thing for Harden right now for his career is to be able to show that he can play at this level in the playoffs. I believe he can. Now, they're obviously going to focus on him. He's getting more double teams, more triple teams, more traps than anyone else in the NBA. But he's still going to be able to fight through that. It's going to keep everyone else open. And if everyone else can hit shots and do well like they're doing towards the end of the season, the Rockets, I think, will be the NBA champions. That's how they're going to beat the Warriors because it can't just be hard. I mean, he, he, he can definitely just win us some games single-handedly here and there. Chris Paul will have heat up here, more here, more here, heat up here. But overall, we need the team to be cohesive, forming as a unit. So this Jazz is going to be really, really important to see Harden show out here, show why the MVP, and make the Rockets be ready to play Golden State going forward. All right, guys. Recap. That's it for the video. Let's um, it's be a great recap, recap. Yeah, we can recap real quick just who won. Um, right. break, break us down who we, we have. I have Luca for Rookie of the Year. I got Trey for Rookie of the Year. We both have PG for Defensive Player of the Year. We both have Coach Bud for Coach of the Year. We both have Pascal Siakam for uh, Most Improved. I have Lou Williams for Sixth Man. Montrez, Sarah, both same team. The British Clippers battle. And we both have James Harden for MVP. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, put your winners for all the awards down below. What do you think about the whole Harden Giannis debate? We I want to hear. I want to hear a real argument for why Giannis should be MVP over Harden. Yeah. So, so you I think you have the best argument. Something about Netflix. Harden versus Giannis, not the Rockets versus the Bucks. Come on, it's not yeah, a team award. Exactly. Absolutely. Individualism. Chase those stats. Well, it's still about the team success, and the fact is Fuck that it's not like it's not like when Harden does this well, that the Rockets the are team. worse, right? It's the, it's the fact how far can Harden really carry this team? It's not does he make it worse whenever he uses the ball more? It's how good can he make the team when he's using the ball? That's that's sure. I mean it's going to be huge. So right. let's go Rockets. MVP. Anyway, yeah, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.